again, I'm back. Uh, I hope uh, what I've just shown you has given you a, a good sense of the experience that I had. As I said, I wanted to try and convey, um, you know, some of the places that had happened and what actually happened and how it felt. I think one of the things that gets lost in people talking about their experiences with aliens is either it's all fear or it's all bliss. It's nothing in between. And rarely do people convey the emotion that they felt. Now, I'm not saying I've done that particularly well, but I think you get a rough sense of how the experience felt for me. And there are a few times when I was actually recollecting what happened and I could see it very vividly. And I felt the same kind of emotion and I had to work hard to suppress that emotion. Which, of course, when you're with these guys, you can't do, you can't suppress it. If there's one thing I want to leave you with, or two things actually, it's this. None of the aliens are hostile. They are benevolent and have universal compassion. You can see that from their interactions with me and the way they create these fields where they can walk above the ground. Now what I didn't mention down there is the field that was created by the tall guys also allowed them to walk above the ground. Only slightly, but above the ground nonetheless. So that's one thing. They have universal compassion and they're benevolent. The other thing is when human beings come in contact with them, they get very sick. We get physically sick and we get highly emotional. And it is well known and well documented by um, those who work with the aliens that human beings can get very volatile and unpredictable behaviours can arise. I have done a lot of my own spiritual work, if you like. Uh, I meditate every day, I practice Qigong. I think I'm fairly grounded and I have good strong energy even though I have cancer at the moment. And I find it difficult to be in their presence without being affected. Now, I'll admit, my body's probably more sensitive than most people's. But from what I understand, um, talking to people who've, who've done face-to-face -face work um, with the aliens, numerous sites around the world, and who are lifelong experiences themselves, most human beings react adversely in their presence. What I think that's about, somehow they're functioning at a different level energetically. And I'm not even sure that, that all that we see of them is coexisting in the same dimension as us. Now, I think I mentioned inter and intradimensional before. Inter is between dimensions, higher and lower. Intra is within the, the same dimension. It would look like uh, I was having an intradimensional experience seeing these beings um, in the same dimension. But just because I'm seeing their bodies in this dimension doesn't mean that that's all they are. And because they have this very different comprehension of time and space, and even death, they're able to go into what we call death. I don't even think they belong to this dimension as we would understand it. And I'm not even sure that, that the concept of dimensions is really... I think we've got it all wrong. And I think even the idea of intra and inter dimensions, I don't know if anyone else talks about that. I do. I think we've got it wrong. I think... Um, there is just one and there are many different layers within that and I'm not even sure that, that we can clearly define them as dimensions or inter, intra and then you've got the dimensions or aspects of time so just coming back I want you to know they're benevolent and when you're in their presence you get physically sick because they're functioning at a different level energetically and our bodies aren't built to handle that. There are things that they can do to make that better and I think that there are things that we can do, um, ways that we can strengthen our bodies so that we've got a good energetic balance 
and we can deal with it. And also, if we are incredibly honest with ourselves, excuse me, and if we've um, done a lot of internal work so that we know what's really going on inside of us and we don't suppress anything, then I think we can be with them without those highly emotional states. Um, if you have tendencies towards control and, and nasty kind of side and you're in their presence, you'll either become like a babbling child or uh, you'll freak out and, and do things. Um, even within kilometres of one, people will start acting strange, do really weird things, extreme behaviours. As you saw, they had to come up to me on numerous occasions to um, balance my body in some way so I was able to deal with being with them. And it wasn't just so that I could um, stop being sick. There was no way I could be conscious unless that sickness was under control, unless the extreme nausea and the other physical states I was feeling was under control. I couldn't be conscious. And as you uh, heard, there were numerous times um, when I blacked out, particularly early on. And there are many other times when I don't remember what happened. And it may well be that physically I was unwell. I suspect it's probably more because there are things that were traumatic there or things they don't want me to remember yet. I thought I'd just very quickly talk a little bit about them physically. As I said before, I don't think that's really that important. You know, there are billions of life forms on this planet and they're all incredibly diverse. And the same is true out there. What I learned in 1997, um, when I first met the Telia, uh, there are humanoid, humanoid life forms out there and I wasn't ready for that. I really expected them to be truly alien, um, suited to their own planets and quite different. What I've since learned is the humanoid shape is um, not uncommon. Uh, somebody who I've mentioned on my blog who worked with the human-based aliens I think I mentioned earlier, um, when she got out they'd catalogued 63 races and two-thirds of them were humanoid. Um, the other third were quite, quite different, vastly different. As I said, some didn't even what you wouldn't even consider life forms, but they are. So two thirds of them are humanoid. So there's a lot of humanoids out there, and I think uh, I've written about it on my blog. Is, I have some conjecture about that. I think there's either a thermodynamic kind of equili equilibrium um, that determines that, or there's some kind of um, evolutionary reason for that and I talk a little bit about divergent and convergent evolution you can read about that but I also think there is a blueprint as well and I think beings like the Talia uh, Telia, sorry um, I think they've been able to use their own genetic material and genetic material of other beings that they've helped create to create this basic humanoid form on different planets and sometimes it does incredibly well and sometimes it doesn't. Um, I think human beings are as good as we've been in terms of our biological form but I think that there have been many different variations that go beyond the standard kind of hominid range that we talk about and many different physical features, you know, different kinds of ears and noses and all that kind of thing. So it seems to me that the uh, humanoid shape is very common and that there are numerous reasons for that. I haven't actually ever asked about that and one day I will. So you need to leave aside that prejudice that you think aliens have got to be vastly different and that's what most scientists will say, most evolutionary scientists will say, well that can't be real because they were humanoid. Well I'm sorry, the reality is there are many humanoids out there. And there are beings that also look very much like human beings. Uh, and that raises a whole bunch of other questions to do with other planets in our solar system and beyond. So I just t thought I'd talk very briefly about the two different types. Um, the Telia, uh, Telia, Telia, whatever you want to say. Um, 
about three and a half to four foot tall, um, very childlike eyes, um, not big at all, um, slightly larger heads, just slightly larger, um, beigey to yellowy kind of skin, plenty of individual variation. Um, Uh, don't wear anything that we would consider as clothing um, but I have seen different um, things on them um, different devices being held with straps and so on what I take to be some kind of strap um, very thin as I said um, very thin limbs, hands, feet um, in the other form that I've seen them in, they look like a fluxing light. Kind of imagine a curtain flapping in the wind with this uh, iridescent fluxing light, like a cuttlefish. Um, and when I saw them then, their feet were kind of pointed like to a tip, uh, like they were wearing some kind of shoes, and their faces were able to morph from one side to the other. So I think they were somewhere else and able to um, move into this physical space. Okay, so that's um, those guys. Uh, a little bit about the tall aliens. This is a sketch that um, someone close to me did who's also an experiencer and who has had a great deal of experience with them. Um, it's not finished, it's just a brief sketch that she did with uh, for me. Um, and I also fed some information to her to, to validate that we were talking about the same beings. So that's the tall aliens. Um, in terms of clothing, um, I've seen them in both like a white outfit, um, white with um, kind of like shoulder straps, insignia, um, some kind of communicator and I've seen them wearing black as well. They're very thin as I said. Uh, I think probably what this picture doesn't convey very well is the eyes. The eyes are uh, intense uh, blue. Imagine um, lapis lazuli, that kind of uh, intense blue with all the colours in there. Um, kind of intense yellows and so on and the pupil, as you can see there, is um, quite pronounced. And when they engage you with their eyes, um, I think I described it once before, it's like coming home. Uh, it's very a very emotional experience. You know the old adage of the eyes are the window to the soul, it's like that. Um, these guys have, uh, I think, four fingers um, and they're quite different their hands to ours much more flexible looking they have a pale skin I don't want to say it's like a white kind of skin and their skin is uh, exceptionally soft imagine um, this is going to sound really corny imagine an old person you know you've got a granny or something and you felt um, the soft parts of the skin, um, you know, the, the skin that's a bit, um, I don't know, maybe the skin under a chin or something like that. I don't have a good analogy here, so don't laugh at this one, it's kind of crazy. But the skin is just so soft to touch, um, it doesn't have a sense of texture like we do, it's just very soft, very comfortable to touch. And some of these aliens almost have like a, um, a glow about them. I know that sounds really corny. You know, people that believe in auras and all that kind of stuff would say it's an aura. Well, I don't know, maybe it is, but energetically, as I said, they're functioning differently. So sometimes you'll notice that about them, and that kind of adds to the color of their skin. So these guys to me are always very pale, not sick pale, um, 
yeah, striking kind of um, pale and very soft texture, as I said. So that's them physically. I've yet to hear about anything like this. As I said, they're very tall, um, 14 to 15 feet, but I have heard that there are others who work on Earth with humans and they're a different size, they're about 10 to 11 feet, so these are a taller version, I don't know what the difference is. I can't think of anything else to share with you at the moment, I'm happy to hear feedback, I'm probably not likely to respond to overt criticism, you know, this is my experience. Take it or leave it if you want to contact me, uh, brightgarlic at gmail.com or you can follow my blog which you'll see the address at the end and the beginning once again. Thank you for getting this far with the video and I hope that I've given another voice to the whole um, so-called abduction um, experiencer and encounter phenomenon and that you have a different point of view about aliens than you did before. Thanks, I'm Bright Garlic. Have a great day. See ya.